Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and on to Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever, and all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, the presence of the Lord is already here, and we are ready to teach the word concerning the subject of faith. We are teaching on a master series called Faith Fundamentals. We've already talked about how faith comes. We've already talked about what faith is. We're presently talking about how we release our faith in God, and we do it two ways. Number one, by believing with the heart the Word of God, and number two, by confessing with our mouth what is in our heart which is the Word of God. Amen. So we've talked at length on what it means to believe with the heart, and we're talking at length right now on what it means to confess with the mouth. So let's join our faith together for the Holy Ghost to minister the Word to us and to teach us the Word so that we will spiritually grow in faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Let's believe God together in Jesus' mighty name. Father in heaven, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, Father. Lord, we declare your glory in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome to have your will and have your way. We will not stop you. We will not hinder you, but we say come in all of your fullness and in all of your glory and teach us the word of God to the point where it's not just information, but it becomes revelation by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, we are yours to command. We submit ourselves totally unto you, 100%. We completely submit ourselves to you. And we thank you for what you are going to minister this morning, Father. And I thank you in advance right now that the entire television congregation has open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that is going to be accomplished in the name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Well, we're talking about what it means to confess with the mouth. And of course, let's get into our principal scriptures for the honor and glory of the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Rome. So the Holy Ghost inspires the Apostle Paul to write the following to the church in Rome for the honor and glory of the Lord. Verse 8 of Romans chapter 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is talking about in the context of salvation. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. However... These two statements, there are two statements in verse 10. These two statements, there are two statements in verse 10 that establish how we release our faith in God. Number one, for with the heart man believeth, and number two, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. How do we release our faith in God? Number one, for with the heart man believeth, and number two, with the mouth confession is made unto. Okay? Now, Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Let's look at Mark, chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Mark, chapter 11, 
verses 22 through 24. These are the words of Jesus himself. And in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, the Lord Jesus Christ makes the following declaration for the honor and glory of the Lord, starting with verse 22 of Mark chapter 11. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now notice what Jesus said in verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now I want you to notice how many times the Lord Jesus Christ mentions the word say and mentions the word believe. Verse 23 again, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Notice how many times the Lord Jesus Christ mentions the word believe. And notice how many times he mentions the word say. Meaning this, believing is very important and very essential. Saying is three times as important, three times as essential. Okay? You know, people will say, well, Pastor Gill, okay then, so do we have to have more understanding on the saying part than on the believing? Let me say something. Let me answer it this way. We have to have as much understanding and as much revelation and insight on the believing part, and we have to have three times as much understanding, revelation, insights concerning the saying part. Saying and believing go together, okay? We master the believing part, but we have to master three times as much on the saying part. Notice what Jesus said. That He said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What you say is everything. What you believe is everything. But what you say is three times as much as everything. Okay? Believing and saying go together. So, we have been ministering at length to you concerning the four kinds of confession spoken of in the New Testament. First, there's the teaching of John the Baptist and Jesus to the Jews that was the confession of of their sins. The confession of their sins. The teaching of John the Baptist and Jesus to the Jews, that was the confession of their sins. Second, there's the confession of the sinner under the new covenant. Okay, that's number two. There's the confession of the sinner under the new covenant. And in St. John chapter 16, verses 8 and 9, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that the sinner will be convicted by the Holy Ghost of but one sin and one sin only. Now, what is that, Pastor Gill? It's the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Why? Because they choose not to believe and trust in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Now, the main confession that they need to make is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Now, what we're ministering right now is the third confession. The third confession mentioned in the New Testament is the believer's confession of his sins when he is out of fellowship with God. This is the third confession. The third confession mentioned in the New Testament is the believer's confession of his sins when he is out of fellowship with God. And we're ministering right now to you on the way back to fellowship. Amen. When uh, you uh, yield into a temptation as a believer and you sin. Well, what do you do when you do sin? Well, uh, 1 John chapter 1, for the honor and glory of the Lord. 1 John chapter 1, for the honor and glory of the Lord. 1 John chapter 1, and this is the whole chapter. And it is a short chapter since it's uh, 10 verses. Let's go ahead and read uh, the, word, the, the whole chapter of 1 John chapter 1. Look at what the Holy Ghost inspired the Apostle John to write to the entire church world. Okay? Uh, and notice, he's writing to believers. He's writing to Christians. He's not writing to sinners. He's writing to believers. And that's very important. The epistles in the New Testament are written to churches. They're written to Christians, those who are already believers. They have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, walking with God, obeying the word. Amen. And so 1 John chapter 1 is written to believers who get out of fellowship and because of sin, they're out of fellowship. But 1 John chapter 1 shows them the way back into fellowship, if you will. So in 1 John chapter 1, starting with verse 1, look at what the Apostle John wrote to the entire church at that time, to the believers, to the Christians. 1 John chapter 1, starting with verse 1. Look at what it says here, for the honor and glory of the Lord. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his truth is not in us. Now, notice how many times the word fellowship is mentioned in this portion of Scripture. In fact, it is mentioned four times in this portion of Scripture. Solidifying the fact that these words are written to believers. They're written to Christians. They're written to saints of God. Why are they written, Pastor Gill? Well, first, as a warning against broken fellowship. That's number one. That's appearing there on your screen. First, as a warning against broken fellowship. We never want to break fellowship with our Lord and Savior, and that's through sinning, okay? 
We're, we're to be careful not to sin. But if we do fail because we are spiritually growing, we've ha- we have not arrived to perfection yet, but we're striving every day, amen, to grow our faith, to grow spiritually to such a degree that we become the full stature of the likeness of Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So these words are written to believers first as a warning against broken fellowship, okay, as a warning against broken fellowship. Second, these scriptures, or this scripture rather, second, this portion of scripture shows the believer the way back into fellowship, okay? 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 shows us the way back into fellowship, okay? If we say that we have fellowship with the Lord and yet we walk in darkness, the Bible says that we lie and that we do not the truth. Look at verses 6 through 10 one more time of 1 John chapter 1. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, notice this, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Look at verses 9 and 10. If we confess our sins, notice verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Okay? Now notice what it says here. If you are out of fellowship, and you brazenly declare that you are spiritually all right with God, then you're not telling the truth because you are not all right with God. Amen. I'm going to say that again. If you are out of fellowship and you brazenly declare that you are spiritually all right with God, then you're not telling the truth because you are not all right with God. If you say that you have not committed sin and yet your fellowship with God is broken, then your faith in God will be feeble. Now, having said this, look at 1 John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Now, look at this. If we confess our sins, this is 1 John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, notice in verse 10. Verse 10 is talking about the person who is out of fellowship with God and won't admit it. Okay? Verse 10 is talking about the believer who is out of fellowship with God and won't admit it. If you sin, then you will know it immediately. Okay? I'm going to say that again. If you sin, you will know it immediately. Okay? The minute you you sin, you will know it right on the inside of you, right in your conscience, because this is where the Holy Spirit lives. The minute you sin, you will know it on the inside of you. Okay? Why do, you, why do you say this, Pastor Gil? Well, since the Holy Spirit lives in our heart, in our conscience, we have a monitor, if you will, that still small voice in our conscience dwelling on the inside of every believer. And this supernatural monitor lets us know when we have done wrong. Okay, If you have missed the mark, and messed up in some way, if you have sinned, be quick to repent and ask God to forgive you. Now, this is going to appear there on your screen. If you have missed the mark and messed up in some way, be quick to repent and ask God to forgive you. I'm going to say that one more time. If you have missed the mark and messed up in some way, be quick to repent and ask God to forgive you. 
God will forgive you. And when he forgives you, you then just keep walking in fellowship with God. Remember, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 is written to believers. What does he say, or what does he write in, in, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? If you confess your sins once, in that moment, God forgives you, and then you can stand in God's presence as though you had never sinned, okay? If you are honest with God, if you are open to God and say, Lord, I missed it, I have sinned, I have come short of your glory, and, and I repent, forgive me, Father, wash me with your precious blood, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, according to 1 John 1, 9, and by faith I receive your mercy and grace in Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you confess your sins and confess it once, at that moment, if you confess your sins, in that moment God forgives you and cleanses you, and then you can stand in God's presence as though you had never sinned. Now, you want me to give you biblical proof for this? Amen. Let, let's look in our Bible. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Look at what God says through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Look at what God himself breathes through the prophet Isaiah. Look at what he declares in this portion of scripture of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Look at what he says here. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Glory to God. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Can I declare this scripture one more time? Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Glory to God. In other words, Watch this. Once you repent and ask God and ask God for forgiveness, I'm going to say that again. Once you repent and you ask God for his forgiveness, God doesn't have any memory of the sin that broke your fellowship with God. I'm going to say that again. Once you repent and ask God for forgiveness, God does not have any memory of the sin that broke your fellowship with God. I want to say that again because that's appearing there on your screen. Once you repent and ask God for forgiveness, God does not have any memory of the sin that broke your fellowship with God. And since God has no memory of it, then you shouldn't have any any memory of it either. In fact, I want to encourage you to do this. Refuse to think about that sin. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the adversary, Satan. Satan will try to get you to think that God has not forgiven you and will still hold that sin against you through constant condemnation. You as a believer, once you have done 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 43, 25, God says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. You put Satan on the run by telling him 
that God has forgiven you according to Isaiah 43, 25, based on 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 43, 25, look at what God says. I, even I, am He that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Amen. What will be our story, if you will, is Psalms 103. In fact, this will be the last scripture for this morning. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Look at what the psalmist wrote here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Psalms chapter 103, verses 1 through 5. Look at what the psalmist wrote here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He wrote the following. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits that we should not forget, that we must not forget? Watch this. Look at verse 3 through 5. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Notice verses 3 through 5 again. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The good news is this. He has forgiven all of your iniquities. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You can now stand in the presence of God with no guilt or inferiority. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus and you are made whole. He's forgiven all of your iniquities. You are clean in Jesus' name. God bless you. God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>